got no reason to be sad today Should be happy things have gone my way But I just can't shake the feeling That something's wrong Seems to have been a going on much too Fumbles through changing guitars fumbles one more time. <clears throat> one more time. That's it. Pull the plug. About ready? Get dressed. I don't know. Twenty thousand dollars a minute. He'd never make it. Never make it. Airtime's too expensive. change for 
Just so very tired. I mean, I know I'm not strung out, but but I will be, man, if they don't get off my back. My mind is very heavy. It's heavy. Loaded with writs and reversals and lawyer's fees and appeals and warrants. I mean, when did all this shit end? keep these things. They never help me in court. Nobody ever listens to them. 
It's a good thing I can't afford a goddamn tape recorder. I, I'd go crazy if I ever heard those bits again. Money's no excuse. I still buy this shit. Well, as long as it isn't a habit. Oh man, would I go crazy if I ever heard those bits again. I've got nothing left except the memories. And they only hurt me now. I mean, they took my money. They took my sanity. They took my profession. I mean, why didn't they take my love for the nightclubs? Where was the crime in telling what is, other than what should be? God, do I miss those people? We hope you enjoyed that group, folks. They'll be back again in a couple of weeks, and we hope you're back again to welcome them. Right now, there's somebody we'd like to welcome. He's a special friend of ours here at Ann's 440, and we'd like him to just come up and say hello. Hello. Aw, oh, come on. Come on, buddy. You're not going to get away with that. Come on, folks. If we clap a little, I'm sure we can get him to come up here. Right now, let's have a big Ann's welcome for Dirty Mouth himself, Mr. Lenny Bruce. You believe this? Mr. Lenny Bruce. Well, I've never been called Mr. before in my life. I mean, this, I mean, Artie must think this is a classy joint or something. <laughs> but how could this be a classy joint when you got a couple of niggers working here? Turn around, folks. Come on. <laughs> you got two niggers. Oh, my God, there's a kike. Thank God for that kike. That's two niggers, one kike, and a, and a spick. Hi, Mr. How are you, Mr. Spick? Good to see you. One spick, one guinea, three more guineas, and a grease ball. Come on, Grinny. <laughs> and one lace curtain, Irish Mick. All right, all right, you're all here now. Oh, that's three more niggers, three more niggers, that's, and the two more kikes, and four grease balls. Five more niggers, five more niggers. I pass with uh, 27 niggers, 10 kikes, and four mix. Now, 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 seriously, folks, listen. What I wanted to say is, well, don't get upset. I mean, it's the word suppression. It's the word suppression that gives it its power, its violence, the viciousness of it all. I mean, nigger wouldn't be nigger if we didn't give the power to it. If President Kennedy got on TV tonight and said, I'd like to introduce you to all the uh, niggers in my cabinet, and he yelled, nigger, 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 and boogie, 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 till nigger didn't mean anything, till nigger lost its meaning, its bad meaning, well, then you never have any four-year-old nigger crying when he came home from school because some white kid called him a dirty nigger. I mean, we give the word its power. It's all a matter of, um, of suppressing the words, but I'm tired of being suppressed. And I'm going to say one of the dirtiest and most despicable words you're ever going to hear. Now, well, I'll have to close my eyes when I say it, because that way we won't know who said it. I might be able to blame, blame it on that guy right over there. <laughs> it's a four-letter four word, starts with an S, and it ends with a T, and it's, oh, it's disgusting. It's, oh, it's terrible, 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 terrible. But listen, stay in your seats, don't walk out on me. Here we go. I'll close my, uh, here we go. Come on, Lenny, say it. Will you say it? Or, here it goes. Come on. Snot. S-N-O-T. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. Let me, hit, let me hit it with you again. Here you go. Snot. S-N-O-2. You know what that is. Now, you all know what snot is. It's green and it's slimy. It's boogies and cooties and all those other dirty little things. And it's a disgusting, despicable word. I know you're all, all, you're all thinking, oh, this kid, he's a, he's a Jewish comedian. He's so clever. Why does he have to use a disgusting, despicable word like snot? Well, kids, we got it. And we're born with it. And I'm going to give you some snot tonight. I'll tell you. Now, one of the most important things about snot is, well, it's very unique. Now, suppose I came up to you and said, hey, uh, let me tell you something about snot. And you said, well, I never knew that about snot. I mean, is that, is, that, is that the truth about snot? Well, schmuck, of course it's the truth about snot. <laughs> Would I lie to you about snot? How could you possibly lie about snot? <laughs> well, I didn't know that, Mr. Bruce. I didn't know that was the truth about snot. That's, that's very factual, Mr. Bruce. Thank you for telling me about snot. I'll never pick my news again. <laughs> your nose, you know. <laughs> anyway, I told him, blow, your out, blow it out your nose, kid. You're a schmuck. That's the truth about snot. Anyway. Snot is a very fascinating thing. And one of the most important things about snot is that you cannot get it off a suede jacket. Did you know that? Snot does not come off suede jacket. You can, go, you can get the best suede jacket straight from the Vegas, take it into the cleaners, and there's no way you're going to get out that door. Son, 
Son, is, th is, is this your jacket? Well, yeah, I think it's my jacket. Well, son, do you know what you've got on the sleeve of this jacket? Well, um, 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 Mr. Grossman, could that, po could that possibly be snot? You're damn right it's snot. <laughs> snot does not come off suede. How the hell do you think you're going to get? I didn't know that, Mr. Grossman. Get, well, well, what can I do? Well, son, there's only one thing you can do. You have to snot all over the fucking jacket. That's all. I, that's all the thing you can do. <laughs> snot over the jacket, and it'll have all different colors of green and boogies and everything all over the jacket. It'll make it even that way. It's, well, Mr. Mr. Grossman, I don't have time to snot all over it. Um, I, I need it for the. I got a hot day tonight. Well, well, son, do you think we do this kind of work? Huh? How many Pollocks do you think will snot on this? I mean, only Pollocks will do it. Oh, well, Mr. Grossman, get, get out of here. Get out of here, kid. The only way to get the snot off the suede is to flake it off, and it'll have black marks all over it. There's no money in it. We can't get the help. No one will snot over jackets. Well, that's the truth. You cannot get snot off suede. There's just no way you can get snot off suede. I'll tell you something about snot. Snot's very interesting. I mean, everybody has it, but tonight, I am going to show you the most authentic Lenny Bruce snot you've ever seen. And if I'm in a really good mood, it's going to be a really snotty show. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> would, uh, would Bob Hope or uh, Jack Benny show you snot? Fake snot, maybe, from a magic shop. But I'm going to show you the authentic, real McCoy, real Lenny Bruce snot. Now, watch this. That's good, that's good. <laughs> anyway, now, now I got snot on both my hands, and I'm really well adjusted. Now, why am I so well adjusted? Well, because I don't look at the snot later. I don't look at it. Now, we take the same man that's not well adjusted. Watch this, slow motion. Hey, that, that's a lot of snot there. The man is totally fucked up. He doesn't have any, he has snot, he looks at it and he watches it. It's like electric to him. Anyway, this snot is all in his hands now and he's got two handfuls of snot. Watch this. Which hand has the M&Ms? Ah, chocolate snot, no? No, it's green snot. Oh, mother, what can I do? People have snot in their hands. They don't know what to do with it. They wipe it under the radiators. You know what they do with the snot. <laughs> under the chairs in the uh, Milner hotels. You've all seen what snot looks like. It's really groovy stuff. And while we're on the subject of snot, let me tell you something about it. I, it's one of the most dirty words and despicable things you've ever heard. It's, it's now in the dictionary. If you wouldn't believe it, it's in the dictionary now. And it's in there because, well, the Supreme Court has been very lenient. They've been very, very nice about it. They've, that, they've let in all those dirty words like bullshit. Now, bu <laughs> bullshit is in the dictionary now, and it means nonsense. Um, it also has, oh, yeah, pissed off means angry. I mean, you know, get out of here, you know. It has P-R-I-C-K. An undesirable person, also known as a schmuck. <laughs> now, now we've got prick and we got bullshit and we got nonsense. We got everything in the dictionary. And the reason it's in there is now because, well, the Supreme Court was very lenient. They wanted a contemporary community standard, a reading that that was every day, very colloquial. I mean, like you wouldn't go around saying "fuck you" means intercourse, you. You know, <laughs> you know, this, didn't, this wouldn't mean that at all. And the Supreme Court was very hip. They're very hip to this, and uh, so they put it in the dictionary. And even got a new word in there. They got cunt, C-U-N-T. And the reason that's in there, because enough of those Supreme Court guys kept on saying to their wives, oh, you dirty cunt, pow, right in the kisser. <laughs> and so now cunt is in the dictionary. And I guess that makes the dictionary a really dirty, dirty book. I mean, now it's a stroke book. I mean, it's, it's the authentic, the dictionary is the authentic, the authentic dirty book that JF, JFK uses. That's what he uses. When Jackie has a headache, where does he go? He opens up Webster's Finite Dictionary, you know, the best dictionary around, he jerks off. I mean, I don't need a good rationalization. That's what I do. I use dude and Nugget and Rogue and Playboy. I use all those other stroke books. Whenever I'm horny, I just whip it out and I look at the pictures. I mean, I am not going about to fly about it. Masturbation is really cool. That's all. You know, for me, it's all right if you're horny. I want to tell you something about that. Is this, I think a lot of marriages split up in my generation because girls didn't understand guys. I mean, they didn't know that guys were different. They didn't. I mean, it, it's very hard for chicks to realize that, well, that guys are totally unemotional about sex. They're totally unemotional about sex. It's very true. Ch well, they couldn't understand. <laughs> listen, come on, honey. Listen, don't get, get back in the seat. Listen, one of the main reasons, well, chicks think that guys cheat because they really love another chick. Well, that's not true. Guys just get horny. If a guy gets horny, he'll do it to a keyhole. <laughs>
Yes, he'll do it to a knot hole, he'll do it to mud, he'll do it to anything. <laughs> but that's the truth. But with but with chicks, it's ti- it's entirely different. They gotta love somebody. They gotta be emotionally de- they gotta be emotionally attached, right? Am I right? They gotta be. And so it's very hard for them to understand that guys are well. Guys have no control of themselves. They just lose control completely. They go out and they're horny. They'll go do it to mud or anything. Any a sandcastle. That's true. That's the way guys are. Let me let me give you a very concrete and very well, here's a good example. Like a chick can't go through a plate glass window and go to bed with you five seconds later. There's just no way she can go through the window and go to bed with you. I mean, it's very messy anyway. But besides the point, if it's unemotional, they can't go to bed. But every one of you guys, yep, I see your faces. Don't, hands up on the table, Sonny. Come on here. <laughs> I know every one of you guys, you can love your little wife. You can be so nice to her, never chippy on her, you know, but be on the way home from work on the Los Angeles freeway, come smack into a head-on collision with a, um, well, with a Greyhound bus full of lepers, blood and wheelchairs all over the highway, 40 dead people bleeding everything, not even in a hospital. In the ambulance, the guy makes a play for the nurse. <laughs> how could you do that with your foot cut off? I mean, I mean, how could you, poss- how could you possibly make it? To- I got horny. You go, what? I got hot. I got hot. What can I tell you, Mildred? I got hot. I think it was because of the nurse's uniform, I was bleeding, and her white, well, Mildred, I got hot, leave me alone. How, you're an animal, you know what you are, you're a goddamn animal, you made it with, I, you're disgusting, you're terrible, forget it, it's all over between me and you, Harry, it's all over. Well, let me tell you something, girls, you gotta remember something, guys have no control of themselves, if they're horny, they'll do it to anything, like I said, like a knot hole or anything, any hole in the ground, they'll do it to if they're horny. That's very true, and, you know, I hear a lot of people saying how, um, well, how the sex act is dirty. You've all heard it. I mean, it's dirty, 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 dirty. Human sexuality is dirty. That's what they say. And it, well, it's really bothered me because I think it's a bunch of bullshit. And I, I, I hope you all agree with me. They think they think the sex act is dirty. And that, to me, that's like saying the human body is dirty. You know, if you say the sex act is dirty, the human body is dirty. And these um, these censors and these filmmakers and these well, a lot of these judges, they think the best titty is a cut off titty. <laughs> you believe that? Uh, b- uh, the best titty is a titty that's maimed. I mean, that's clean, kid. I mean, show my six-year-old. Come on in, Jimmy. Oh, uh, look at the dirty titty. Oh, it's all cut up and maimed. Oh, look at the stab wounds. Wow, that's really cool. But if the titty's pretty, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Mildred, get rid of Jimmy, will you? Take him away. It's, it's a pretty titty. It's ripe. It's juicy. It's sexy. I want it. But hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. If the, if, if the titty's clean, forget it. There's no way you can get a kid into the, into the movies. And it's really, well, I don't find the logic in it. I just don't see the logic. To me, the, the human body is just really damn beautiful. And there's only one way to make it dirty, and that's to kill it. Hiroshima was really dirty, Jim. That's the most. All right. Hey, Johnny, can, hey, can I have a little sip of that? Oh, thanks. You dig this, I get up to do, uh, to say hello to you, and I end up doing seven minutes here. <laughs> That's what we wanted. You wanted it? I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad I was around here. I want to tell you something right now about my kind of comedy. That's what I'd like to talk to you about. I mean, like, I get, you just saw here about five or seven minutes of just pure ad lib. I mean, I didn't come up here and plan something, go home and write bullshit, saying, well, this bothers me, I want to write about this, I want to write about this, you know, like all those other stupid writers, like Jackie Cannon and Jerry Lewis with his Japanese act, you know. <laughs> and, well, I don't do that. I just come up here and ad-lib and spill my guts to you. I mean, you know, certain things in the world bother me. The Senate, JFK and Jackie, their little love affair, and, uh, and all his other love affairs with um, MM, and uh, but we won't talk about that. And, well, you bother me, and, and I bother myself, and the world bothers me, and I... Well, if I can make fun of it in any way, if I can satirize it in some way and make a joke about it, well, I get my rocks off on it. It releases me in some way. And I, well, I hope I do. I hope you dig it. But what I really want to tell you is that, well, I can see the end coming. I mean, that's why I put up with the bust. I mean, I understand what's happening to me. I can just, I, I know the ending all the way. I'm going to get a letter saying, Lenny Bruce, come to court on December 23rd in the New York State Supreme Court. And I'm going to go in there. I'm going to open up the door, and I'm going to hear, surprise, Lenny! And the, and the, the hall is going to be decorated with streamers and confettis and everything else. And, well, and all the DAs will be there, and all the judges, and all the people that ever busted me, the narcs, the junkies, everybody. And I'm going to say, Mr. Bruce, after everything you've gone through, everything, after everything you've done, after all your jail sentences, you never lost respect for the law. That's the truth. You've never lost respect for the law. Well, that's what I guess they're going to tell me. I never lost respect for the law. And Maybe that's true. 
What the hell with this? I'm, I'm talking too much already. <laughs> I hear there's a really fine uh, act coming up. Oh, he told me about it. And, uh, well, that's the real show, and this is, well, it's enough. I'll love you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm ready now. Oh, do I hope this is good shit. I'd just like to forget for a little while. I'd like to forget the money I lost in my trade. Oh, yes. I'd really like to forget New York City, where I was one of the first people ever busted for obscenity. Great city, New York. Big liberal town. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. The Bronx is up and the batteries down. The people live in a hole in the ground. New York, New York. Mr. Lenny Bruce? Mr. Bruce, you are charged with violation of 1140A of the New York Penal Code. Mr. Bruce, do you understand the nature of your violation? Yes, Your Honor. My crime is that I've been arrested before. That's right, you're charged. I beg your pardon. We well, you see, Your Honor, I got busted in Hollywood, Town A, for obscenity. Then a year later, I got busted in San Francisco, Town B, for obscenity. Well, then I got busted in Chicago two months later for obscenity. So naturally, by the time I got in New York, well, they had Mr. to bust Mr. Bruce, me. I, I will not to... tolerate your personal observations in this courtroom. This room is not in existence for the purpose of your commentary. Do you wish to say something? I wish to testify, Your Honor. Are you represented by counsel? No. I'm, uh, I'm substituting for counsel, Your Honor. I advise you to appear Your Honor, here with please, counsel. Your Honor, please, please, I can't relate to my counsel, but I won't waste any of the court's time, I promise you, please. All right. You see, I haven't testified, but I have a lot of tapes here and transcripts that'll prove my innocence. You, you are know? mistaken, Mr. Bruce. You did testify. What? That's impossible. I was in Los Angeles on the first day of this trial, Your Honor. That's correct, Mr. Bruce. So you testified by proxy. By, by, by proxy? Well, how could that be, Your Honor? Explain. Well, you could not appear in person, so we had a peace officer perform your act for the court. He was presented as Lenny Bruce in substance. Was they any good, Your Honor? I didn't see much humor in your act, Mr. Bruce. Are you ready to testify, officer? <clears throat> well, I don't know, Your Honor. I'm no comedian. How did you prepare for this, officer? Well, I just took a pencil and paper into the nightclub and copied down his act. I tried to get the parts that were dirty, Your Honor, because they were the most important parts. Well, can you tell the court exactly what you saw and heard in the nightclub? Well, I could try, Your Honor. Like I say, I'm no comedian. I have some notes here. Your Honor, here's Lenny Bruce's act. President Kennedy jacked off during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and then his wife hauled ass to save her ass. And, uh, oh, this is a good one. The Lone Ranger wanted to freak with Tano and a horse, and, uh, well, I have to refer to my notes a minute. This here. stuff stinks, Your Honor. This is terrible. I'll not have you make a mockery out of judicial process. And uh, then he made gestures of masturbation with the mic, and uh, let's see. He said a bit about kids and dogs watching him screw a divorced woman, and uh, well, that's about it, Your Honor. I hope you liked it. Thank you, officer. You're dismissed. I was really dynamite, Your Honor.
Do you see, Mr. Bruce? By presenting your act in court, you were duly represented. Now, how can you defend that filthy and disgusting act? That's not fair, Your Honor. Not only do I have to discuss, do I have to do myself, I have to defend him. I mean, that's really, un that's, in that's unquestionable, Your Honor, please. Mr. Let Bruce. Me show you let me show you my evidence, please, Your Honor. I gotta show you the merits of the case, the obscene, the moral play. Let me give you the gestures, the visuals. I'll do my act for you now. Mr. Bruce. You were duly represented by counsel, and the case was concluded. Always, always duly represented and duly concluded. But you got to let me testify, Your Honor. It's only fair. Please, Your Honor. We will not grant your application your Honor, at this you mentioned time gestures. to reopen the case. You said they were gestures of masturbation. They were gestures of benediction. I mean, I got the right to say, fuck you. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Please don't look at me. Your Honor, I didn't say that word. I only want your respect, Your Honor. I want the court to know that my income has gone from 350000 bucks a year before all this to six thousand dollars. The court dollars. urges you to be represented your honor, your by honor, counsel. Your Honor, please listen to me. I've just come before you finally. I mean, you know your kid says motherfucker. How dare you say that, Gregory? Don't say motherfucker. It's a dirty word. You say that, Your Honor. You say motherfucker. Please let me testify. Let me testify now, please, Your Honor. Please let me testify. I, I, I'll do the justice for you. I'll do Mr. that. Mr. Bruce, I must your, your ask honor, that you please. Not... I know what obscenity means. I know more than any DA in any place, any country. I know obscene is a legal word like possession is, but it has nothing to do with common sense, Your Honor. You know that. Let me I do insist for you. that we follow your proper honor, procedure your honor, in this I realize, courtroom. I realize I come before you like Eichmann, before a Jewish judge. It's an insane thing. I mean, to keep on going from you to the court, from you to the court. They tell me, my attorneys tell me, the schmuck don't know I anything. will not tolerate obscenity in this courtroom. What obscenity, Your Honor? Mr. Bruce, I may not be of Jewish persuasion, but I do know the obscene meaning of the word schmuck. Not smuck, schmuck, S-H-M-U-C-K. Schmuck is a Yiddish word. It's from the Yiddish language. There are no obscenities in that language. Please, Your Honor, let me testify. In fact, I'll give you an example about schmuck. We drove in from Yonkers. Who did all the driving? Me, like a schmuck. Now, me like a schmuck doesn't mean me like a schmuck, unless you're a faggot Indian. Oh, white man, me like a schmuck. Ha, ha, ha. Mr. Bruce, what is the point of the this? The point is you have to examine the language and the intent before you can say anything about it. Now, I have brought some transcripts and some tapes from, the, from, from my act. I'll show them for you right now, Your Honor, here. I have all my transcripts right here for you, Your Honor. Please, let me show them for you. Let me show them what they look like. I have a bit on, I have a bit on Jackie, Jackie Kennedy. What? A, where is it? Come on, well, where, where's Jackie Kennedy? Here is Kate. Here, here is your honor. Your honor, this is it. This is what your peace officer said. He said, he said, he made gestures. He said, Jackie Kennedy holds eyes. Now, your honor, you know, this is totally out of context. Your honor, this this can't be true. I've got thousands of tapes, Your Honor. I've got tape recordings of the tape recordings. I spent $63,000 in the past two years on tape recordings, Your Honor. Please, give me a break. Let me show you my tapes. I've got tapes and thousands of tapes, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor, don't finish me off in show business. I mean, don't lock up these 6,000 words. That's what you're doing. You're taking away my words. These plays can never be said again, Your Honor. Please, I'm broke. I don't got a job anymore, Your Honor. I just, I just come in and out of hospitals to talk to you. I traveled 3,000 miles to get here, Your Honor. Please, let me show you this. Let me show you what the form was. Let me Mr. Just... Bruce, the case has been concluded. All right, all right, all right, Your Honor. All right, Your Honor. No, 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 no act. No, no, no act. Just a legal argument. 1140A is unconstitutional. It's being applied unconstitutionally, Your Honor. Please, let me tell you this. You say gestures of masturbation. You say they disturb the peace. Well, that's impossible. Unless maybe, maybe they offended uh, the prurient interests of some homosexuals. But, Your Honor, masturbation gestures couldn't offend anybody, not the police, anyway. They're adults. Mr. Bruce, the Your proceedings Honor, have Your been Honor, concluding. Sentence me. The sentence me to The proceedings have been concluded. Your Honor, I don't have Mr. a cabaret Bruce. card anymore, Your Honor. They stole my cabaret card. They took my tapes away from me, Your Honor. I don't have any money, Your Honor. Please sentence me. Please sentence me, Your Honor. No. Please me. No. The court wishes to have a probation investigation. It also requests a psychiatric evaluation by the psychiatric clinic, December 16th. Bail continued. Parole continued. Case dismissed. You did real good today, Lenny. They really listened to you and Jackie Kennedy, didn't they? You can put your name in the book now. Leonard A. Schneider, number one putzo lawyer. In the halls of justice, the only place you can get justice is in the halls. 
In the halls of justice, the only person can get justice in the halls. In the halls of justice, the only person can get justice in the halls. On August 3, 1966, comedian Lenny Bruce crashed to the floor of his apartment and died from an overdose of heroin. Nobody but Lenny knows what happened in those last few minutes of his life. But we know this. We know that the police was aware that he possessed a quantity of fatally pure heroin. Because in less than two hours after death, they raided his apartment with a band of reporters who propped him up and placed a needle back into his arm for pictures. We know that even in death, the police harassed him as they did in his life. Lenny never wanted to be a spectacle or a symbol or a martyr. He was accused of those things in his lifetime, but achieved them only after death. That at the age of 40, that above all is obscene.
Thank you.